Dario Argento and George Romero. They are both legends of horror who were forever entwined with the latter's 70s opus, Dawn of the Dead. Argento and his team found out about the movie and agreed to co-finance the project in exchange for international distribution rights, which led to his own cut of Zombie. The two have a lot more in common, with both creating anthology TV shows with Romero giving us the classic Tales from the Dark Side, while Argento had the unseen night shift. While the two are legends in their own countries and worldwide, they have each had their fair share of movies that have gone by the wayside. Those are the types of movies we specialize in on this show. And today's episode is a two-for-one with the co-directed Two Evil Eyes. It is one of the best horror movies you never saw. These two masters of horror are universally known for their most popular, genre-changing hits. But honestly, they each have more than their fair share of black sheeps and best movies people never saw. Argento struggled to find the same popularity he once had once he crossed into the 90s. And for Romero, if it isn't a zombie flick, good luck finding people that are familiar with the remaining filmography. Two Evil Eyes, that is two separate Edgar Allan Poe adaptations was originally supposed to be much more. Originally, the film was pitched as a more traditional anthology film, with four stories instead of two. In addition to this, the creative duties would fall to two additional directors and none other than Stephen King and John Carpenter. Carpenter had to pull out due to scheduling conflicts, and King wasn't ready to direct again after the miserable time he had on the set of Maximum Overdrive. Another source has the fourth director as Wes Craven, but honestly, King makes more sense, particularly with Romero's story in the film being somewhat of a creepshow reunion. The four-story anthology just wasn't in the books, nor was Romero's planned Edgar Allan Poe anthology TV show. It had four episodes on the schedule, ones by Romero and Argento, but also Argento collaborator Michela Soavi and Richard Stanley getting episodes. While we didn't get that, we did get a two-hour movie split between Romero and Argento. Two Evil Eyes adapts the facts in the case of M. Valdemar and The Black Cat. While The Black Cat has been a mainstay in Poe adaptations, the facts in the case of M. Valdemar has only appeared a few times on screen. Both stories take place in contemporary Pittsburgh, as Romero films are wont to do, and the first tale was written and directed by Romero. It stars Adrian Barbeau and Rami Zeta as conspiring lovers against Valdemar. Barbeau needs no introduction to this crowd, but if Zeta looks familiar, you may have seen him in the many TV productions he has worked on or another best horror anthology you've never seen, After Midnight, from 1989. The rest of the cast includes Creepshow alums Bingo O'Malley as Valdemar, E.G. Daly as Valdemar's attorney, Chuck Aber, and Tom Adkin. Nearly every other actor has shown up in a Romero production as well, so this movie is a best of in terms of acting talent. Valdemar is dying, and his wife and her lover are hypnotizing him to get his fortune. The lover just happens to be Valdemar's doctor, and they plan to split the fortune while running off together. As the money begins to come into Jessica's account, the two struggle to keep Valdemar alive. He dies while under hypnosis, and they decide to keep this a secret but Valdemar is somehow able to talk to them. He is trapped somewhere between life and death, and we discover not alone either. Dr. Robert is fascinated by this, but Jessica is horrified. The voice they use for the unalive Valdemar is a mix of the drowned voices and zombie dad from Father's Day. It's a great effect and very unsettling to hear. Valdemar wants Robert to release him so he can move on, but Jessica shoots him in the head something that will be hard to explain to authorities. Valdemar comes back, and we get the cool scene they took for the cover art. While he is walking and talking, his mouth doesn't move, and we are just as terrified as Jessica. The mysterious others are using Valdemar as a vessel, and not only does he kill Jessica, but Robert also wakes him from his hypnosis. Tom Atkins plays the investigating officer, and he is basically an alternate universe version of his character in Night of the Creeps. The final fun effect for the first story comes when Robert thinks he has gotten away with both murder and the money. If you think he's getting out of this unscathed, 
you haven't seen any of the EC comics or Poe stories that this is based off of. We finally get to see the others, and Tom Atkinson's cop discovers a grisly scene. The second story, directed by Argento and written by frequent collaborator Franco Farini, feels like an Italian horror movie. It has more gore, nudity, and at points, a giallo tone to it. This would already be the seventh project the two would work on together, and they would go on to do another six, including Argento's recent return to directing with dark glasses. The story centers on a crime scene photographer, Roderick Usher, itself a fun Poe callback, who slowly slips into madness, murder, and cover-up. In addition to Keitel's very silly attire, he also had a very unique clause written into his contract. Effects legend Tom Savini does the makeup for this story, as well as appearing in a bit part, and Keitel had his lawyer send a letter to the director saying he would not be seen with or shown his severed head. Savini later asked the actor about the letter to which Keitel said, quote, Oh, it would just give me the creeps. Keitel and his girlfriend live in an apartment together when his girlfriend, played by Madeline Potter, adopts a black cat that immediately sets Usher on edge. To be fair, this cat definitely hates him, but he starts to mess with it almost from the start. You see, he takes these photos of the macabre and murder cases for his job, and it's starting to have an effect on him. This eventually leads to more or less a kitty snuff catalog, and Keitel feigns ignorance. The couple's relationship deteriorates, and we get a full-blown 90s Keitel performance. It's not quite bad lieutenant levels of insanity, but we get some good crazy moments. Either through all his alcohol or guilt, Roderick has a dream where he is killed in a very medieval way. The effects here shine, and I can see why maybe Keitel wouldn't want to be anywhere near his created double when it's killed in such a grisly fashion. Annabelle not only sees the photo book Usher created, but before she is able to run away, sees him attempting to strangle the cat. She intervenes and pays the ultimate price for it. The next 30 minutes is an elaborate string of ways that Usher attempts to cover up the murder. He tricks his neighbors, one of which is played by the legendary Martin Balsam, into believing Annabelle has left to go on tour. In reality, he has walled up her corpse and is attempting to get on with his life. This ruse starts to fall apart as little pieces of evidence come to light that he can't explain or can't cover up. He hears a scratching on the walls and sees his nemesis in the same spot that he entombed Annabelle. He kills the cat again, but the cops are closing in on him as they canvass the neighbors. The cops come to visit, and Usher is about as guilty looking and sounding as a human can possibly be. They find the body and its gory spectacle of human and animal. Roderick is forced to kill again, but just like the first story, things don't end well for our main character. The movie is a twin bill by horror masters that are past their prime. Many fans think that opera, or even Phenomena, were the last good Argento movies. And if you ask some fans, Romero doesn't have anything worth seeking out outside his zombie trilogy. The movie was sadly a failed experiment for both men, and neither reviews or box office were kind. The movie had a budget of $9 million, which makes sense with the caliber of effects, actors, and the two directors. Sadly, even with a release on the week of Halloween in 1991, the movie would make a dismal $350,000 in its theatrical run. While it wasn't released in as many theaters as a standard film, its 150 screens nationwide should have yielded better results. The reviews weren't much better, with many critics feeling the stories were uneven in pace and didn't fit well together. They also didn't see the Romero story as anything that felt like the director's work. While the two creators were close friends and worked well together, the failure of this film was a tragic one. It could have led to a TV series in the same vein as Masters of Horror, or future films together, but this would be the last collaboration between the two legends. While there are parts that do drag on, it hardly makes the movie not an essential watch. The first story is a slow burn, eerie thriller that doubles as a creep show spiritual successor, and the second story is a gore-filled stress fest. Thankfully, unlike some of the movies we cover, this film is readily available. Its physical media presence has been strong, thanks to the folks at Blue Underground releasing it at regular intervals whenever a new tech is ready. It has a two-disc DVD, a three-disc Blu-ray that also includes a soundtrack, and a new 4K transfer that is beautiful to watch. For those who just want to check it out without the investment, 
It is also regularly available on free streaming service Tubby in its uncut form. While it may not be the best anthology film ever made, or the best movie from either gentleman, Two Evil Eyes is a great watch and is one of the best horror movies you never saw.